All right, I'll go over basic uh, medium temp walk in box control wiring. Just a regular old uh, walk in cooler. And uh, we'll start inside the walk in box with the evaporator coil first, and then we'll work our way to the roof for the condensing unit. Okay, this here is our walk in box. So our evaporator coil, our line set, up to the roof, to our condensing unit. How do you like that quality drawing, huh? Good stuff. Okay, and on this very basic drawing, we're gonna add a A421 ABD O2C thermostat, because I like them so much. And we have a liquid line solenoid valve. And that's it. You got a coil with your evap fans, a thermostat, and a solenoid valve. That's where we're going to start. Now in the building, we got our breaker panel. This is where it all starts, our breaker panel. We're going to have a separate circuit for our evaporator fans, which is usually, in this scenario, is 115 volts. So let's write that on there. This is going to be 115 volts. On an ideal situation, if it's a commercial building and we have three phase available, up for our condensing unit, we'd be 208, 230, three phase. We might not have three phase, so it might have to be 208, 230, single phase. Or if it's a really good commercial building, you might have uh, 480 volts. Usually, you're going to find 208, 230 if it's a regular old restaurant. You're either going to have three phase or single phase. Ideally, you want three phase for uh, power consumption. That's going to be a separate circuit on the roof for your condensing unit. So that's going to look like that. From your breaker panel in a conduit up to the roof to your disconnect for your upstairs unit. Separate circuit. Now we're gonna have a 115 volt circuit that comes over here to our evaporator coil. So from our breaker panel, we'll have our 115 volt circuit. So this will usually be a single pole breaker. This will be a three pole breaker if it's three phase for the roof unit or a two pole breaker if it's single phase. So we got our circuit for evaporator coil. Usually you'll just have a switch in here for your disconnect. We could draw that right here. Be like a light switch. Power on, power off for your service disconnect for your evaporator coil. All right, so we got our 115 volts coming from our breaker through our switch. The switch is usually located somewhere on the box or on the evaporator coil. We're gonna come over and we're gonna heat up our fans, L1 and our neutral and our ground. Let's get that in, that's where we're gonna start. And those fans are gonna run 24 seven. All right, so we went ahead and we heated up the fans. We got our L1 neutral, I made in black. Neutral goes back to the neutral. All right, now we gotta fire up. We gotta get power to our A421, which we're gonna take from L1 and neutral, and we're gonna take those to fire off our thermostat. We need power to power up our thermostat. And we're gonna get it from these two. It's that simple. Okay, so we got L1 and we got common just to get power to fire off our thermostat. So now our thermostat's going to have power, our fans are running. We're going to take L1 inside this box like this, and it'll be a jumper wire from L1 to common for the controls. These are your dry contacts. So we're going to make a jumper inside the box from L1 to common, and that's inside your thermostat right here. I'm just drawing these down here so you can see them. And then that's how we're going to fire off the normally open set of contacts. There's also a, a set of normally closed in here. We're going to use the normally open. 
And so this is actually the switch inside the thermostat. So when it calls for cooling, it's gonna make like this. Bink. Let's get that colored in. Okay, the thermostat calls for cooling, the contacts make. It, it's gonna come over and catch half of the solenoid valve. The other half of the solenoid valve just goes to your neutral. Right, these Thermostat. contacts open, the solenoid will close because there's no longer power going to the solenoid, so the solenoid would close, and our refrigeration system would pump down. And that's all it is for the downstairs. It's that simple. Power in, fans run full time. If we're using a digital thermostat, we got to fire off the stat, so we need 115 volts to fire off the stat. We're going to take a leg of the 115 for the common on the contacts and then are normally open to half of our solenoid. The other half of the solenoid goes to the neutral. And that's it for the inside of the box wiring for the basic controls. Now let's take a look at the roof. All right, so everything we've gone over down here is basically the thermostat bangs on and off this solenoid valve. Ring. Fans are always running. When this solenoid valve closes, it stops the flow of refrigerant. So the pressure in your condensing unit drops. So let's go over our condensing unit wiring. So the breaker, power to the disconnect, inside the panel for your condensing unit is your contactor. And we're going with three phase today. So Coming, the power from the breaker goes to the top of your disconnect. From the bottom of your disconnect is going to go to the top of your contactor. L1, L2, and L3. So let's get those in there. Again, the disconnect at your unit, I drew it right here. It's off the bottom. The power from the breaker always goes to the top of your disconnect. You don't know how many times I've found it wired to the bottom. And what happens is if it's a fused disconnect and the power from the breaker comes to the bottom of the disconnect, when you turn it off, it's still hot through those fuses if you were to grab them with your hand. So the line goes to the top, load comes off the bottom of your disconnect. So it comes over to your contactor, L1, L2, L3. That's the top of your contactor. Inside here, you're gonna have a low pressure control and a head pressure control. We're just talking about basic wiring right now. So let's get those going next. This is usually how it goes. Your coil in your contactors right here, it's usually a 240 volt coil. And usually what we do is we just take one leg to half of the coil. That's how they do it, it's that simple. So we got that drawn in there. Half of the coils fired off. Then we'll take one other leg through the low pressure control, through the high pressure control, and back to the other half of the coil. So it'll look like that. Okay, so our thermostat gets a call for cooling. These contacts make energizes our solenoid valve, the pressure in the unit comes up, our low pressure switch makes, our high head pressure is already made, and we get voltage to the coil. The contactor pulls in, these legs go to our compressor, L1, L2, L3, and that's gonna fire off our compressor. Contactor pulls in, also off the bottom here for our compressor, a couple legs will go to your condenser fan motors. We'll draw them as like this, condenser fans. So your condenser fan's running, your compressor's running, thermostat gets satisfied, these contacts open, solenoid closes, our pressure goes down and our low pressure switch here opens up, drops out our contactor. Now, for some reason we're running and these fans fail, and our head pressure gets too high, or if whatever our head pressure gets too high, 
our head pressure switch opens up and that will also drop out our contactor. Okay, one last thing to go over. On, if you have three phase and you have a scroll compressor in here, the scroll compressor is phase sensitive. It has to spin the right direction to pump. Um, you'll have your gauges on it. You can listen to it. If your pressures are staying the same and it's running and your suction pressure is not dropping on your gauge, to correct that problem, shut off your disconnect and change any two wires. Just flip-flop. You can take this one, put it here, take this one, put it here. And then that'll get your rotation reversed for your compressor to run the right direction if you have a scroll. On a resip, it doesn't matter which way it goes. And that's basic wiring on a walk-in box. Super basic, super simple. The super tech. Basic wiring for your walk-in box. Hope that helped. Hey, do me a favor, hit the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed, that'll help me out a ton.